Okay, so last time we played, uh, we started off as you guys had just approached the drowned forest after charging through the ghoul marches. And uh, there you set out to try and track down the bandits and try to find Hotch. So after trying to get a lay of the land and remember what you could of the lost map, you decided to head south and you trekked through the forest through the whole day, initially setting off a set of shrieking mushrooms that alerted your presence to some of the denizens of the forest. And you were soon afterwards uh, ambushed by a particularly stealthy group of gnolls. After a harrowing fight, you guys continued your journey through the forest, and after a long day of travel and with the help of Brin's nature savvy, you guys managed to track through the holes of the forest and find the southern border to Burl, a fortified outpost that uh, guards the road that goes between the drowned forest and the shivering wood. You guys recuperated there and met up with the Hearth Maiden priest for the Great Binding. Let's try to find her. For, that was Tara Ridgestone. And uh, you met up with Gorgos Bose, the lieutenant. Second in command for Burl, who was somewhat discouraging of your quest to find the druid, but gave you a rough direction that they would be closer to the seat area of the drowned world. He also told you that there was a farm in the northern section of Burl that had recently been plagued by a troll. And he offered to give you an audience with the commander, Kiara Shadowbreaker, if you guys were able to deal with large problems. After that, you guys all bought uh, some riding horses and were then prepared to set off on your way. So, I would say this is probably around midday after you've had your your communications with Gorgos. So you guys are now to free to do whatever you may please. Friends, we are well provisioned. Let us make haste to the frosted tips for we must warn the people of Silver Stand of the impending danger. We must go there without delay. I'm behind you, Theron, or in front of you, as the case may be. First, we yes. should kill the troll. <laughs> That's getting too distracted. We must not slow down in this and quest to save Silverstand. And what of Hutch? The captain has spoken. You would be proper to listen to the captain as he's speaking. <laughs> uh, yes. Fortunately, we have lost his trail, and it seems to lead back to that most unfortunate place, uh, Seton. Let's not go back there. <laughs> <laughs> that was not good. That, that was place. certainly not a nice town. They are unfriendly to our kind there. Indeed. We braved the woods in search of Hotch, but alas, we could not find him. May Maraganor protect his soul. But we cannot wander the woods aimlessly forever. Not with no trace. Could be in trouble. And should we not, should we not follow up this troll? Mm, wise words, Captain. <laughs> Perhaps we should consider what Eok was saying. <laughs> hmm. 
Hmm. But what of all the elves? You'll just let them die? A whole town? To save... To kill one troll? Their town has remained hidden. We did give away their location. Saying there's a town of elves hidden in the mountains is like... I don't know. It's got to be the most obvious thing in the world. You're here. I take offense to that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> then we will split the party. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Two adventures at once to keep track of. <laughs> Four, in fact. Let's all go our own way. <laughs> Captain, I will defer to your always impeccable judgment. Whether we chase down that foul troll with the large scar on its face, or if we proceed to the frosted tips. Certainly there's glory in battle and riches along the way. We certainly need some riches. I am penniless. <laughs> <laughs> Most unsuitable. However, I would like to save this town, first and foremost. <laughs> Indeed. A few farmers losing a goat here and there to a troll is nothing compared to the devastation that those fair hands will bring to the people of Silverstand. It'll be seaten on a global scale. <laughs> and you know how that went. <laughs> so your argument for not going to seat is to instead face off against Go to a worse seat. <laughs> Go and save a place from becoming seaten. Wait, this is getting confusing. They're not going to start hating themselves in Silver Stand. <laughs> no, but if the fair hands murder all the elves. It will be an empty town. Yes, yeah, a ghost they're town. They're gonna move in and Brynn. make it a seat in two. I I don't think they would live there, Bryn. I think they would destroy <laughs> it to the ground and that would also be a less than becoming way for them to end. Trust me, I've witnessed firsthand the way the humans have treated the sanctity of the elven temples. Yeah, we have to stop them from reaching Silver Stand and warn them of their advance. Then it's decided. To Silver Stand we go. All right, you've convinced me. Here, here. Let us not tarry a moment longer. Down the road, clippity clop. Huzzah! <laughs> keep your, keep right. your eyes peeled. I keep my eyes peeled. Before we get started, can I, like, sense humanoids? Sure. Do your secret move. Do your secret move and take a moment to commune with your environment. You detect um, a couple hundred humanoids in Brawl. And... Within a five mile radius, you don't sense anything within the forest. All right. The coast is clear. And by the coast, I mean the forest. And by fully clear, I mean the first five miles. <laughs> clear of humanoids, but not other dangers. This report gets worse. <laughs> Kelnaz, can your dragon friend fly up ahead or above us? Keep an eye out. I, I, I perform a ritual. Woo. Instead of burning spell slots all the time. And Bims flies to the sky. Takes to the skies. I hope you and I are casting spell slots every time you summon Bim. Cause it's, yeah, well. <laughs> once you, <laughs> once you like summon him then until he dies, you don't have to cast it ever again until oh, you just, you just <laughs> like action in and action out. Yeah, you didn't even have to do find familiar. That's like to find a new familiar. Ugh. 
These well, bardic ways are new to me. So, you know, there's a little give and take there. <laughs> so you guys are... Takes to the skies and scouts ahead. So, let's bring up the handy dandy map here. So you guys are going to go down the Burl Road to the west here? If you call it the Burl West. Right, there's this dotted line that heads toward. This is the road. Where's this town we're going to? Hopefully you know where you're from, Bryn. I'm from the Frosted Tips. I know them like the back of my hand. <laughs> Even without a map, I'm sure we'll find it. He hasn't led us astray yet. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, it is... Uh... It's this little clump of trees that's in the upper part, above the word tips. Tips! That's where the town is? Yeah, I've been meaning okay. to put it on there, but this map... Well, remember, we don't have a map anymore. Oh, did you give us back the regional map? Or yeah, you guys it? got the map from uh, Gorgos. There we go. Yeah, he uh, chastised us for adventuring without a map. He's carrying it, strictly speaking. Making copies. <laughs> here, here is where we're going. Let's follow the road. Okay, so you guys have put yourself into a rough uh, marching order here. And Bims is going to be the one actively perceiving. Dragon. Oh, yeah. yeah. I still have the ability to move you, Kevin. Oh, and dear. Also, I also have your character sheet. You can see it all my secrets. Feels like ultimate power. I've slowly been stealing money from everyone in the party. That's why I have so much. <laughs> Should have stole faster. All of mine burned in fire. I didn't steal it fast enough. <laughs> That's on me. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> shouldn't mention it. Did you just lose control? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what you get. Okay. And are you guys just going to go at a normal traveling pace? By horse. Normal horsely traveling. Pace. Yeah, we're moving like horse speed. No more walking like a bunch of chumps. Okay, let's see here. Uh, twice the usual distance. Oof. Okay, that's pretty fast. Yeah, we're mad fast. Well, I'm reading yeah. galloping. That's sorry. So it's uh, okay. let's just well, it's basically just, it seems like it's just double though. All right, so let's see. I just lost that page. So if you guys go to normal pace for a full day. And horses. It looks like you'll be able to get 48 miles, which is like basically two hexes on this map. Hell yeah. It's pretty good. We're basically there. Yeah. All right. So, have uh, Bims here do a perception check. Uh, he just rolls on my stats, right? 
Uh, no, he rolls of his own. He goes plus three. So looks like that's the same as what you have anyway. So there you go. Huzzah. Okay, so you guys set off from your... Uh, set off from Burl around the half day mark and with your horses the travel is quite quick especially on the road and after a couple hours uh, Bims gives you a mental urging and uh, communicates to you that there's there are people along the road up ahead Uh, so I will alert the party to this information that there's people on the road ahead. And I'll Bims call Bims to, to like kind of circle around to survey and uh, gather more information. Bims flies off, and when he returns a few moments later, he, he imparts to you this mental image of uh, three travelers. And uh, from the distance that he was... You can't make out too many de details, but they are walking slowly, and it looks like uh, perhaps that they might be injured. Can I tell if they're moving away from us or closer to us? They're moving from towards you. They're, they're moving towards us. along the road towards Burl. Okay, so I'm going to um, pull ahead a little bit on my horse and stand next to the group and give that information that there's three... Figures ahead of us that may be wounded, not moving very quickly, and they're heading in our direction. So we should prepare ourselves. Perhaps they could be in trouble. Wounded, eh? They may need our help. We should hasten over there. Indeed, they could be injured elves. Who knows? Well... I'll, I can go and make contact. Bryn, you could lay in wait and ambush in case, <laughs> in case there's trouble of flesh. Don't go as planned. Well, you never know. It could be a trap. Well, Theron, I'd be glad to speak to them. Nothing no. Nothing bad could possibly happen. No, that's fine. I am trained in the medical uh, techniques. It would be best if I saw to their aid. Can you perform an uh, ocular pat-down, though, with the efficiency that I can to identify <laughs> potential threats? <laughs> ocular pat-down. Uh, you're, you're the important uh, blim operator. I'm sure he'll stay back here and make sure that he <laughs> stays flight and warns us of reinforcements. It's a very important task. Oh, well, in that case, uh, yeah, very well. I, I'll perform my duty. All right. I will uh, ride ahead of the group a little bit. And, and Should we lay in ambush? Well, <clears throat> I'd say, like, you guys just kind of stay on the side. Like, don't follow me down the main road, but follow me down on the side. Just try to stay out of sight. And, you know, at the first sign of trouble... You know what to do. All right, so we'll stay what, like, sixty feet back, hundred feet back. Mm, don't stay too far back. I'd say within arrow shot. How far can you if shoot? That is <laughs> at least hundred feet. Yeah, hundred twenty feet, I think. Or... All right, so we can stay hundred feet back. <coughs> All right, hurry. We must see if they need aid. I uh, head ah! forward. I also move forward. Okay, so then Theron and Ren are going. Yeah, in case he needs backup. Ryan wasn't listening to the plan. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I'm going to hide in the woods before we get close to them, though. You start riding out, and after just a few minutes, you turn the bend, and you can see in the distance that there are these three figures um, 
You guys can both make perception checks. Can Bims as well? Um, yeah, if Bims is with them, yeah. Yeah. Is he flying with them or, or like flying up in the air or what is he doing? He's flying up in the air. He's like a UAV, basically. <laughs> okay. Ooh. So, Bryn, even though these guys are probably still maybe 200 feet away, uh, you can see with your with your elven eyes, you can see that this is three um, very worse for wear looking people who are walking down the road. Um, there's a, a small forest gnome uh, woman. Uh, there's a half orc, seems to be a half orc man, and uh, another woman who looks like she is a uh, an elf walking. They're all walking with some form of injury. Um, some of them are slightly limping. Um, it looks like that they've definitely sustained some kind of wounds or injuries. Uh huh. Theron, there's a wounded elf ahead, along with a gnome and a half orc. They certainly need our help. They seem quite injured. In that case, let us hasten forward. Yeah! 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 I mean, shh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Kelnaz and Eok, what are you guys going to do? You guys see Brynn and Theron kind of turn the bend and take off. I look at Kaldas to see if he's got any hint of what's going on. Uh, I just see them rushing ahead. I think we just keep to the side of the road. Okay, so we stay about 100 feet back? And yeah, we're 100 feet back. So we, we, we keep up with them, but back a ways. Okay. Okay, so you guys approach, and as you approach these three, they stop walking, and the half-orc, who you see now is more of a teenager than a man, uh, is carrying a large... Uh, he's bruised and bloodstained, but he's carrying a large branch. And when he sees you guys coming, he picks it up in his hand and uh, holds it menacingly. It doesn't say anything. You notice that the forest gnome is has short brown hair, and she's carrying her arm in a sling. Uh, worse off is a young elven woman who has long silver hair, uh, but she's got a black eye, and her ears are cut and are roughly bandaged with leaves and pulses. Boom. What do you guys say as you approach them? That they look like uh, they're ready for anything. I uh, I shout out. Uh, we're not here to harm you. Do any of you need medical assistance? I am trained in the healing arts. The forest gnome and the orc seem to relax a little. Uh, and then the uh, forest one says, Who are you? My name is Theron Evanwood. I am a dragoon who has been traveling with uh, these parts. And uh, it seems like you're injured. What, what has happened to you? Why have you become so? As uh, she answers, you can see the tears start brimming in her eyes, and she says, uh, We three are seeking refuge. We come from Seton. We were driven out. She starts crying, and, sh and the uh, half-orc kind of gives her a half-hug. 
says, yes, we have been, we were driven from the from Seton. They are so angry. We did nothing, so. <laughs> Uh, hmm. Yes, I am familiar with how they are p- treat people in Seton. Well, you might find some refuge at the town of Burl, just north along this road. We have come from there, and, and despite my own uh, blood, we were treated most kindly there, and were looked after. Do they know about the attack on Seaton? Well, I don't know. I've heard anyone talk about it specifically. But news of such a devastating event must surely travel. The Mims is going to land on Theron's shoulder. The Ellen woman is, at this point, still looking at you all very fiercely and still says nothing. And uh, the half-orc says, uh, And Und, how far away is Burl? Are we almost there? We have been traveling for so long, and we have had nothing to eat. Hmm. It's likely... Uh, I'm going to say a day or two from here. But I'm sure we could, I could help you out with some food. <laughs> and I uh, share with them some rations. Thank you very much. My name is Shump Berkla, and this is my friend Laura Lee. I'm pleased to meet you. Everyone but the elf takes takes your rations. And Chump says, You can't imagine what it's like to have nothing. <coughs> I'm going to report back to Eok that every, they're, they're, they're just speaking. They seem to be not a threat. So I think we should move up and join the group. Okay. I'll follow... All this. Giddy it. Yeah. Um, does it does it look like uh, any of them have any more serious injuries or like ocular pat down? Paralyzed or anything like that? Um make a perception or an investigation check. Investigation. <coughs> um, the wounds on the half orc seem to be mostly superfluous. He's got bruises, some cuts, and uh, scrapes, but doesn't seem to be severely injured. Uh, the gnome, Loralee. Uh, seems to have a hurt arm. She's carrying it in a, sl- in a sling. Uh, but the one who's most <coughs> significantly injured is the elven woman who you can see uh, has had the tips of her ears cut off. And uh, they've been just very, very roughly bandaged with leaves. And like there's a... Like, uh, from what you can see... Like kind of a sticky green kind of paste that that seems to be secreting from the on the on the leaves. Madam, let me let me check out your wounds here. You look injured. As you approach her, she uh, jumps away and says, "Don't touch me. I don't need your help." But we must stick together. Surely we are one of the same kind. (laughs) She says, I don't care if you're my kind. 
I don't want your help. Leave me alone. Those injuries look very serious, though. I'd, I'd at least like to take a look and tell you what I think. Make a persuasion check. She seems to stand down a little and says, You may look. Do not touch. Keep your hands away from me. You can make a medical, a medicine check if you'd like to make a more. Ooh. You cannot get any sense about whether or not this wound is uh, anything more than the obvious than what you're looking looking at. It's, I think the wound could be festering. It does not look very good. Have you been putting some sort of uh, balm onto it? It's green. I have this poultice. It's a healing mix. She seems very um, uneasy as you as you bring attention to her wounds. You've had your look. Yes, yes, I won't touch, but at least let me know you're going to see someone about that, because it looks pretty serious. I mean, they have removed your ears. That can't be comfortable. Perhaps you'd like a <laughs> drink of wine from friend Kelnaz's wine skin over here. She says, I'll have no wine. Never mind my ears. Round ears, they call them. Ooh. Bunch of racists, those uh, fair hands. She looks like a ranger! <laughs> Where, where were you heading? Where, what, what has happened? Where did you get these injuries? You look rough. Five. No, it else looks rough. <laughs> <laughs> Bryn, they've just come from Seton. Oh, I'm sure that is suffered. an awful town. Let's never go there again. I <laughs> lost my shirt in Seton. <laughs> with all of my other belongings. Well... You're lucky to get out of there with your life. Anyhow, friends, Three we of should them kind of share a look as you, as, as you said, they come from Seton. And Laura Lee says, uh, "We found Adri at the Nelson farm." Adri at the Nelson farm. Nelson. Search Control F. <laughs> <laughs> Nope, don't have that on the sheet. Might be spelled in ten different ways, though. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. That's my mistake. It was spelled in a few different ways. <laughs> it was Adri, you said? Yeah, I don't remember an Adria. I seem to remember the Nelson farm. I don't remember what it was, though. Oh, I definitely remember the Nelson farm. <laughs> Adri... <laughs> Uh, as Laurel says this, Adri shoots her a, a venomous look and says, that's enough. I don't want to tell these strangers anything. I just want to be left alone. We have so many questions, though. <laughs> yes, so many pointless questions. <laughs> <laughs> Were they turnip farmers? <laughs> Perhaps were they farming beets? <laughs> mm, perhaps. A beet farm? Good old beet farm. Chump stamp. 
<laughs> Shump stands up and says, uh, "We must thank you for your gra- for your uh, help, my friends. But we must be going. We must reach Burl. Thank you for the food. Could we trouble you for any spare gold you may have?" I'll there and perhaps you can part with some of your gold. <laughs> I'll part with gold. Here's twenty gold, and also take my horse, for you must be wary of traveling on foot and need to reach uh, Burl as soon as possible. Are you serious? Oh, thank you so much, sir. Sir Evanwood. I shall speak of your praise when I get to Burl. Thank you. I am glad to hear it. Make haste and safe travels to you. He pulls up Laurely onto the horse and... After a few moments, Shump and Adri break camp and start moving towards Burl again. After a few moments, you guys are alone on the road again. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on oh. the road. Get Let's hit the road. Theron, we'll see you there when we get there. <laughs> Good luck catching up. Can one of our horses support two people? But I guess would move at a slower speed. Theoretically possible, yeah. Bryn, why don't you offer Theron a seat on your horse? Well, I could always travel with my good friend Theron. Us light elves can really both ride a horse at once. Uh, <laughs> but you see, I have bonded with the kindred spirit. And I <laughs> summon my mystic steed. Oh my oh, god. Yeah. A celestial being, an intelligent warhorse, blessed Holy by Marianor. <laughs> wow, how could you let this happen? <laughs> <laughs> that is so sick. Holy shit. Like yeah, check this out. Intelligent. I can communicate it with it telepathically within one mile, and it understands Any my spell language. you cast also affects the mount? Uh, like any self-targeting spell that affects me. Do so you I like cast. buff or heal the horse yeah. as well? So like bless would affect both of us. Well, I guess I wouldn't really do much for the horse, but like any sort of speed boost would affect. I don't know. There's probably some janky combos, but oh, Scott's gonna find the janky combos. <laughs> I'll find those combos later. <laughs> right now, we're just... so far is cast Scott on a celestial horse. Cast haste. <laughs> That's the janky combo. Ooh. Haste, so it doubles your speed. Go to a gallop. Bob said a gallop was already super quick. Double speed the gallop. Quad speed? But isn't haste a minute? Yeah, it's not forever. Yeah. But still, you cover a lot of ground in a minute. <laughs> we'll do the math when it comes to that. <laughs> <laughs> so Theron takes 10 minutes in a long prayer to Maragonor, requesting Maragonor's aid and all speed for his holy quest. And at the end of the 10 minutes, uh, there's a crack of copper lightning and a ball of lightning s- hovers over the ground for a moment and then takes shape into this celestial war horse. Ah, Luna, my steed, I have dreamed of you. You are more brilliant than I could have imagined. I don't know if it actually talks. I think it just understands me. I don't think it can actually talk. Let's see. No, I'm pretty sure it can't. No. Telepathically, 
I, I know what it's thinking though, so. We're on the same wavelength. Okay, I mount up and we sally forth. Sally forth! Alright. I guess you don't really need a token, but whatever. There it is. There it is. Uh, okay, so you guys are going to continue same path? Same same pace, I mean, sir? <coughs> I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then let's have... Uh, I'd say right now it is probably a few hours away from dusk. Probably like three hours away from dusk. So make a perception check from BIMS if you guys are ready to do your traveling. Let's travel Boom! Oh, man, easy peasy. Again. BIMS is like an expert scout. Yeah, he should really be put in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Mutiny! <I trust him. laughs> First mate, BIM. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so you guys managed to travel for another three or four hours as darkness ascends, and you are basically in nighttime. Hmm. <clears throat> Perhaps we should set up camp and rest for the evening. Well, we could leave the road and find a secluded spot nearby. Indeed, definitely safer than being on the road. Let's see. Sure. Yes, there should be a suitable place. Most suitable. Okay, so let's just pull up the map and I'll describe to you guys whereabouts you are. Should be showing for everyone. So you guys made it from Burl to hmm, basically a Burl's at the bottom corner of one hex that is mo that takes up the center of the drowned forest. You guys basically made it almost to the to the fork in the road between Seton and the Frosted Tips. You guys will probably get to that fork in the road on horse probably a quarter of the day way through your next day of travel. Did that make sense to everyone? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So you guys are going to make camp or? Yeah, I'll find a secluded spot and make camp for the night. Okay. What are you guys going to do for your before your long rest, or to prepare for your long rest? Um, I can do the first watch, as usual. I'm going to make copies of that map and hand them out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll telepathically tell my horse to keep watch also, because I don't trust Kelnaz. But okay. I don't have to say this because I'm telepathic, so I'm not saying it. Can I like... interrupt the telepathic wavelength by... <laughs> Because I can talk to Bims, and can they like kind of cross cross channel? cross channel the? Uh... <laughs> you hear some static. And... Uh, get off the line, Kelnaz. I'm trying to talk to my <laughs> celestial <laughs> being here. Beep, boop, beep. <laughs> I'm ringing up the phone. <laughs> All right, you, you, why don't you make a dexterity check for your? Cartigraphy endeavors. 
Okay. You make a very basic, basic shape map. Completely <laughs> 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 average. <laughs> it won't good as... get anyone through the forest, but it will certainly be a good teaching age for young adventurers. <laughs> How do Luna and Bims feel about each other? What do you mean? Can we check to see if they're friendly or are they like standoffish or do they actually oh. hate each other? Like their relationship, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Would you like Bims to like uh, Luna? Well, I want them to be friends. What type of being is, is Bims? He's a, he's a uh, dragon? Uh, I is believe he? so. I, he was some sort of dragon. I have it written down somewhere. He's a pseudo dragon. Pseudo dragon. Ah. So it's not a true dragon. He's like a dragon like creature. But, um, or he's part dragon kin, but he's not a true dragon in the sense of what you would think of as a dragon. Uh, can't breathe fire, for instance. But he's just like a little magical bean. I'm sure they become fast of friends. Bims is very curious about Luna and smells, and Luna seems quite indifferent. Luna is here for a holy purpose, so unless there Bims is there will any sit kind of on Luna's back. Indication she's pretty ambivalent. Okay. Bims begins trying to convert her. <laughs> There's so many other gods out there that Ragnar doesn't really have all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of this other guy named Tyr. <laughs> uh, Kevin's hatred of Tyr transcends timelines. <laughs> Okay, well, if you guys are going to do your long rest and, uh, and Kelnaz is going to do a watch, then Kelnaz, you I'll take the first watch. Do a perception check. Oof. You're swarmed by mountain lions. Again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great because I needed a new cape. You spend the majority of your watch trying to disrupt the telepathic communication between <laughs> And there, <laughs> and you're fairly certain you succeeded when you start feeling very sleepy and you realize your watch is over. I will keep my eyes closed and wake up Bryn because I don't want to see what's happening down there. And I alert him that it's his watch. I'm assuming he's sleeping naked again. Oh. At attention, yet again. <laughs> it happens when I'm in a trance. <laughs> it's a lifting experience. <laughs> oh, no. He is a wood elf. <laughs> oh! oh! All right. No. So let them know that there's no mountain lions around. All right, Brent, are you gonna do a watch? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and do your perception check. I perceive with the best of them. The Oof. night, the night passes, and you do not see any threats to your camp. No threats to our camp on my watch. Kelnaz will take note. Kelnaz snores loudly. My friends, it's an early morning. Quick to rise and let's go save the town. Uh, 
<laughs> okay. You guys are going to go on the road again. Same formation as the past. Yep. Works for me. Okay, then Bim's going to do his perception check. Another critical. Whenever you're ready, Nybert. Ah, uh, yes. Oof. Let's get back in formation. How did I do? Um, I have to see. Okay, a few hours as you break camp, um, you're noticing that um, to the north of you, the drowned wood is starting to thin out a bit more. And, um, and as you guys are traveling, Bims notices that there are that there are four uh, people who are uh, creeping through. Uh, some of the wood and seem to be lying in ambush up ahead. Ooh, okay. I, uh, again, pull up to the rest of the group. Let them know. Was it three people? It was four people. Four people are up ahead lying in ambush. Instead of being ambushed, perhaps we should ambush the ambushers. Should we lay some sort of trap? Some sort of complex trap that is sure to fail. Yes, I like the way you think. <laughs> Perhaps one of us could walk ahead, pretending that we're wounded, and then when we spring their trap, run back into our own trap, which will then be sprung. Springing twice the trappiness. The double spring sprung. <laughs> Hmm. We could just try and sneak up on them. Mm. Probably not me in my jangly armor, but perhaps <laughs> Bryn and Kelnaz could infiltrate their ambush, and then we could charge in after them. Perhaps we could use Bims to lead them into a double-triple trap, where two of us stand <laughs> forward and two stand backwards. <laughs> And the initial trap then triggers a secondary trap. <laughs> yes, Ren, yeah. thank you. The first trappers are consumed. <laughs> Bryn, I like the way you think. Complicated trap is <laughs> must work. <laughs> it's trapception. <laughs> Bryn, you're a famous bounty hunter. Certainly you've set up traps and ambushes. Well, you're the, clearly the expert, so I'll, I'll leave it up to you to decide what to do. But let me be known I'm ready to charge at the moment's <laughs> notice down this road. On your celestial horse. Damn right. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> so, Bryn, what do you think? What kind of tricks do you have up your sleeve? I certainly think one of us should go in loudmouth a blazing <laughs> while the other takes a more cautious approach and perhaps waits in the bushes to see how it plays out. Perhaps I could create an image of a wagon that is filled to the brim with gold and jewels and rubies, mm -hmm. a perfect bait for any sort of bandits that might be trapping the road. An excellent plan. Foolproof, indeed. I appreciate having a map, Bob. It helps so much. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Anytime. Okay, so 
We going from right to left? Uh, Perhaps yeah, Luna like, could doesn't really pull matter, I guess. this magical I was, wagon. I was thinking from right to left, since that's Burl would have been there on the map. But... Yeah. You guys want to line up? Wait, we're going, oh, from right to left, gotcha. So the green spot here is basically just rough terrain. It's not like thick woods, but the grass starts being more gnarled with roots and there are um, the dead trees that are covered still with mushrooms and mushrooms growing out of the ground in this area. So how are you guys approaching this? These beings were probably, well, Bims could have seen them probably about 150 feet away. So I created a uh, wagon that looks like it's full of valuables. Wait, you just created a wagon? Well, uh, it's a major image. Oh. Impressive. But we need something to pull it, and that's just, perhaps just Luna. Before, like, I don't know if you can move that. Yeah, it says if you can move it, the image appears at a spot. Um, where is it? As the image changes loca location, you can alter appearance oh, so that the movements appear natural for the image. So, like, the wheels would turn. That's amazing. Yeah. Very specific. If you pulled by a celestial horse. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh -huh, yeah, as long as you stay within range. Okay, yeah, that's fair enough. So, like, Bims right. can be sitting on the perch, but perhaps Luna could pull this magical wagon? Okay. I just didn't want you to waste the spell slot early. That's all the reason I wanted. Oh, I, I will waste spell that. slots. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, I count on it. <laughs> okay, so you guys have created this illusion. Um, Kelnaz has pale blue light cast from his fingers and it, sh and it uh, flushes forward into become a big wagon full to the brim of rubies and gold and gems. <laughs> no bandit in the right mind could pass up this wagon. And then perhaps we should split into teams of two and move along the shrubberies and pounce on them as soon as they pounce on the wagon. What say you, Bryn? Absolutely. I'm going to hide in the bushes on the north side of the road. Yeah, you'll come with me? Yep. The north and side of the road was the right side that they were on. Just so that they're knows. in the bushes? I thought they were on the road. No, they're in the bushes. Yeah, Wait, they're hiding in the bushes. I'm going to hide in the bushes on the opposite side, over to the side here. It's a good vantage point on the celestial horse pulling a, a fake cart. <laughs> and being driven by some strange imp. <laughs> Nothing to see Super here. Dragon. Just an ordinary wagon of riches. Actually, part of my mirror Abandoned image today... With a celestial horse. <laughs> okay, hold up, hold up. <laughs> As part of the mirror of the major image, could I have like a, the, a figure, a person, sitting in the wagon there? If you really want to get elaborate, you need to have the, the wagon look like it's broken, like a wheel's fallen off, there's a figure trying to fix it. it I'm going to say feel. it has to be an object or, or a creature. Oh, it can't be both? Well, it kind of says you create the object, a creature, or some other visible phenomenon. Mm, all right. I'm going to say just objects. Ryan helped oh. cement that as he started elaborating. <laughs> Thank you. So I'll cast my major image on your major. Image. <laughs> I guess major I'll, imageception. I'll be the bait then. I'll I'll sit on the wagon. Actually, I'll get in my disguise, my old man disguise. There we go. You have to sit on you to sit on Luna or something. Yeah, I'll sit on Luna. Because you can't sit on the wagon. Can I see? Is Luna friendly? Is she gonna like? Kick my skull in? I've communicated with Luna to only kick you off if you start doing something stupid. Until then, 
you'll be able to ride her. She I begrudgingly agrees. Contemplate for a moment trying to pickpocket the horse, but decide <laughs> now is not the time and sit on the horse like a normal person. Okay, if you guys are going to uh, try and sneak up through the bushes, then make a stealth check. Super stealthy dude. So we are moving from east to west. So, okay, as an old man, I'm going to be like, hope we get all these gems back to Salt Marsh. <laughs> Do it nice and quiet, so there's no possible way. To... Oh, what was that guy's name at the dock? Mirin? Where? No, Pardon? Jalon. Jalon. He's the super wealthy guy down by the dock, right? In Salt Marsh? Mm, prime water. Yeah. I'll say, oh, Jalan is waiting this shipment. As you guys get close, um, and there, uh, Kelnaz is musing out loud about his <laughs> shipments. <laughs> you hear a voice call out, say, "That's far. That's far. That's close enough." And come out of the bushes. But I'm not in the bushes. Who said that? Everyone can make perception checks. I'm a simple old man riding this wagon. Filled with valuables. Not looking for any trouble. Okay, so as you guys, as you hear the voice, uh, you notice that these people are doing a terrible job of hiding. But there are four people who clearly have seen you coming, but have also done a poor job of hiding. I'll say, uh, get, get out of those bushes. I can see you there. I may be old, but I'm not that old. You see a man uh, walk out of the uh, woods with splint armor on and a crossbow level directly at you and That's says... It. I see your elven friends and that giant. Come out now if you want to live. We'll just take your wagon and be gone. Now listen here one minute, young man. Don't dare point a crossbow at me. You'll lower your weapons immediately. Do you want to make a persuasion or intimidation check? I'll do, uh, I think I'm better at persuasion. Yeah, I'll, pers I'll try to persuade him. You don't know what you're getting yourself involved in. Oh, <laughs> oh critical <laughs> failure eight. That's the worst. <laughs> he says, uh, I know exactly what I'm getting involved with. And it's relieving you of that very nice looking wagon. Now, I'm not going to ask again, and he pulls back on the crossbow bolt. Can I cast a spell before he shoots? 
Mm, no, we'd have to go into initiative. But, Fuck. yeah, let's do initiative. Our plan has failed. Every man for himself. <laughs> Can I trample forward with Luna? And just, like, run this dude over? What are the trample rules? Tank shot. <laughs> <laughs> It means the trample, the, the damage carries on to the next uh, next enemy. Yep. Trample right through. Trample, trample the shit out of this guy. All right, well, terrible on the initiative here. We're missing at least one person. That would be Bryn. Oh. Got to get in there, Bryn. I was too busy looking at my spells. My... Oh, wait. I get advantage, though, on initiative rolls. Oh, it was with advantage. Go with the first <sighs> one. 20 is a fail? No. Um... My initiative, it automatically took the... Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. That I think that confused me last time, too. ...into account, where the bottom one I rolled a 1 and a 16. Right. I, I thought it just did 1, because usually it puts them next to each other. Except sometimes. All right. Kelna, is your up? All right, well, I, I would like to roll for trample damage on this guy. Can I, like, trample and slice at the same time? A slicing trample. Just quickly look I've up. just been reading the mounted rules. Oh, thank you, Scott. Um, all it is is that the... Well, there's two ways to do it, but I think the way that makes the most sense is uh, she acts, like, during my same initiative, or I guess in this case you are mounting. And um, she basically has only three actions that she can do. She can disengage, dash, or um, dodge. Those are the only options she can do. Hmm. Disengage, dodge, dodge, and dive. It takes half your movement to either mount or dismount. And, uh, yeah, those are the main things. So it's just for movement. She doesn't have yeah. any, like, attack actions. That is correct. Feel boobs of fury. Use trample damage. Okay, so can I do like a drive by? Luna will charge for. Okay, here's my plan. Can Luna like come forward, turn around, and pick up Theron? And when Luna's reached this point, I do like a somersault backflip and stab this guy. I guess so, because like, I guess this works like normal. Where, like, you, you can do stuff afterwards. So, like, your movement is going to be used to dismount, and half of your movement is spent doing that. Yeah. I don't know what that means for her. What do you think, Bob? She, she probably has to wait for you to do that, so I would say probably speed would be halved as well. What is but her speed, anyway? is a double somersault. Well. <laughs> She's not stopping moving. All right, that <laughs> might require a die roll, though. I'll leave Oh, I expect to roll at least one die on this one. Passive, <laughs> passive gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it has 19 hit points. And its AC is 11. Speed is 60. So, uh, Kelnaz, you can do that depending on how you roll. Okay, what do I have to roll? Roll a athletic, uh, acrobatics check to do your... Yeah. Athletic. Everybody watch this. I sh shout for everyone's attention. Attention! Watch this! Oh! Ooh, okay, so you flip oh. and I'll give you advantage on the attack. Fuck yeah! Nice. Oh, oh, damn. That was just normal. Can I roll again? Why? Oh yeah, roll again, of course, yeah. Just to see if I yeah, get yeah. a crit. Sorry, I... Oh, there what? Weird. Okay. Okay, yeah, there you go. Well, 23 hits. 
four piercing damage. Oh, it's just the four. The bandit is flummoxed as he sees you spin through the air <laughs> and land <laughs> gracefully at his feet just for your rapier to come up and give him a small little poke. <laughs> now he is... And I remove the disguise and say, you've just been bamboozled by Kilnaz and his <laughs> bloodthirsty horde. <laughs> All right, Iuk, you're up. All right. I am going to cast... Oh, shit, I have chips. Hold on, BRB. Fuck. Oh, I wish uh, I had chips. Take that. Really Scott's got the week off. Kevin's got chips. I got beef jerky. Bob's got beef jerky. Big Kevin hates Gillette. Uh, Just all in all, there's nothing Kevin's left. Scott got things you don't have. Me, it's hatred. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to cast haste on Theron. I'm not on the... Well, actually, it doesn't matter, I guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't get too Plus haste. to AC... Advantage on dexterity. If it's too loud, I'll mute myself. Additional action. So you can get. Oh, that's sick. Three attacks per turn, basically. Good lord. That's pretty awesome. As Eok casts a spell, pale blue light shoots out of his fingers and encapsulates Theron, who. You feel a burst of energy flow through you. Plus two AC, you're basically untouchable. Yes. Okay. Right. Now it is Bryn's turn, unless you want to move. He rage quit. We lost him. Dear God. He was <laughs> he's too impressed by my backflip. Well, I'm gonna go get a drink, I'll be right back. I guess I will too. Yep, me too. Game is over. All right, I'm back. Is Ryan back? I'm still here. Uh, I don't think so. Oh man, this guy better not have gone snacks. Can you blame him? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. It's one thing I know how to do. It's hold a grudge. <laughs> Snack grudge. Wait, you just say to me. Place grudge. You just made an enemy for life. <laughs> oh my god. You weren't kidding. Mm hmm. 
My God. You don't have to call me that. Damn it. I'm back. Since Ryan's taking extra long, I'm also going to go use the washroom. Right back. Sorry, dudes. I assume we're at my turn. Yeah, we're just waiting for Bob to get back now. Okay. Um, and Kelnaz didn't murder the people. Poked that guy. Kevin did haste. Yep. Oh, and then I was the next person. Oh, sorry. I thought Theron was before me. You bailed right on your turn. Yeah, bailed right on my turn. Unbelievable. How far away do you think these guys are from each other? Probably 10 feet. No strategizing. Stable talk. All right, Ryan, you're up. All right. How far away are these guys from each other? They're as they appear on the map. So, those guys are within 10 feet of each other. Ten feet, in. Okay. Um, I'm going to fire an arrow at this guy. With my longbow. Twenty-three. That's a hit. These guys are humanoid. They are. They're humans. Well, there you go. Can't get more humanoid than that. Six, seven, eight damage. Ooh. All right. Um, and I will use my holy shit extra attack <laughs> to fire at him again. 18. 18 hits. 9 damage. So 9 more. 2 arrows just thud into him. Boom. Cries out in pain. What does that sound like? <laughs> wow. Damn. He's very dramatic. <laughs> Is All he right. hamming it up a little bit? It's too hard to tell. All right, Theron, you're up. All right, I climb onto uh, Luna's back, and I call upon the blessings of Maraginor. Boom. And... Uh, I'm going to say Bryn, myself, and Kelnaz have been blessed by Maraginor and add 1d4 
all their attack rolls and saving throws for a minute. Ooh. Hell yeah. Blessings. Indeed. I curse for I don't remember. Right. Only, what? only Eok is, in, is 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 within thirty feet range of your of you to do that. Ah shit. Okay. Ooh. Wait a sec. I might have some room. Let's see. And Luna has used her speed this this round. That's true. That's why I was thinking of doing this instead of anything else. You're no, I wouldn't be able to do that. fast right now. Oh, that's true. I could use my own movement to like. How far do I go? I, am I double? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what I do then? So I was like, right. Whoops. Whoops. Oh, you can angle things differently. Okay. Yeah, like your speed is naturally doubled, so you can go sixty right now. Like you could run right into them. So I think what I'll. Whoops. I think what I'll do. No, I, he is in difficult train, which halves his speed. Ah, uh, okay. But he can dip out of the pretty quickly. And... Yeah. So it'll be like 10. Uh, 15, 20, 25. Actually, I could go like 25. And then I would need to go back uh, 10 in order to use 5. So would that get me within range of not quite? I'm still a little far away to do this jangle. Um, okay, here's what I'll do instead. I'm going to just call Luna to me. She'll come to me next turn. So I'm going to go uh, as far as I can, basically. Whoa, holy. That's one move? Well, you were, like, here. You were in the bush Five. somewhere. So that's ten... 20, uh, we'll say 30, and then 30. Okay, so like I can get like right here then. Do it this That's way, Scott, because usually when you go on diagonal, every second one is, is double. Every second diagonal you move is double. So make it simpler than what you were doing then. There you go. There's 10 feet. Mm -hmm. There's... Another ten feet, and now you've got your super speed, so you're at forty feet. Forty, okay. Uh, wait, where's that line? And just remember, every so, other diagonal you take is counts as two. Okay, so this one would be two. You've already. Uh, you, uh, I can't remember if you've already done the diagonal one. I don't think you've done any diagonal so far. So that would just be five. Okay, so five. This would be 15. Yes. Uh, 20, 25, 30. So we get to here. And that actually does get me just within 30. Okay, that works. That works. It's jangly, but... I like it. It works. And uh, yeah, so you guys get that blessing, and we're good to go. Then you can move the rest of your movement. Well, that is, but they're all my movement, because that was 30 plus the, like, whatever I had to use to get out of here. Okay. Yeah, so it's like 60 with all those nerfs to movement. And then 30 inch range. Okay. Aha! Well, you allow the jangle, and you guys get your bless. Okay, now it's their turn. The bandit that is facing Kelnaz is draws a long sword. What's your AC? Sixteen, I think. Let me check. All right. Fourteen. It's fourteen. Okay. Okay. You, well. Yeah, you take seven slashing damage as his Can I use first that extra first. roll? No, I guess it doesn't matter. No. And he swings back with his longsword again. So you take another seven, seven slashing damage. Okay. Try to get the drop on me, will ya? 
The next one is going to go 10 feet to get out of the bush here. And then go 5, 10. Thirty. He levels a heavy crossbow at Yuk. What's your AC, Yuk? I am at fourteen. The bolt doesn't come particularly close to you and just gets lost in the woods. Okay, and these guys, five, what about ten, twenty, thirty, okay. Uh, these guys are wearing uh, just cloth, uh, and they're wearing red. They seem to have um, medallions around their neck. Um, Kelnaz, you can make a perception check if you want to see if you see yes. what it is. What is it? It's a holy symbol of, Tar <gasps> of Tarnox. This is the god of war, uh, god of war and hunting. The the acolyte Arr. that steps out of the brush here uh, makes an incantation, and his hands glow with uh, ruby red fire. And make a dexterity saving throw, Theron. I get advantage to that, plus 2 AC, and I get plus 1d4. Yeah. Good, so, good call on the, on the uh, advantage. Go ahead. So I do advantage, uh, dexterity, saving throw like this. Oh, and then I roll... 1d4, please help. Oh god, Ooh. it's only eight. <laughs> uh, you look down as the acolyte's incantation ends, and as you look down, uh, the ground erupts in ruby red fire, and uh, sacred flame is burst forth. Ooh, and you take a whole. One, three fire damage. Or radiant damage, rather. And the other acolyte is going to... Ten. Twenty. And... He crouches down... Seems to be ready for anything. He's taking the dodge action. Which one is that? This guy? Yeah. Kalanaz, you're up. Alright. Using a bonus action, I will be casting my super trance. Combat inspiration to Theron. So you get an extra 1d6. So don't forget. Nice. And then using my actual action, uh, I think what I'm going to do, this guy has a crossbow still, right? Uh, nope. The, the guys who are wearing just cloth, they um, they seem to have clubs. These small, oh. like, not quite maces. 
Okay. Um, so this dude has a crossbow then. Right? Yep. This guy? Yeah, the, guy? the okay. two guys in this one both have long swords and crossbows. So until. Okay, this is my plan. I'm going to hit this dude with a spell I haven't used yet. Heat metal. So I want to heat up the like handle and metal firing mechanism of the crossbow in his hand. So it grows, it glows red hot. And he okay. takes 2d fire damage with the DC 15 constitution saving throw. Right, he fails that. Take that. Okay, so did you roll your damage? Twelve. Oh, twelve. Twelve okay. fire damage. Ah! Uh, and that's so the end of my turn. And he, so he, drops his sword as it grows red hot in his hand, and he clutches his hand. <laughs> You've sprung into our trap. You thought you were it's the old trap switcheroo. <laughs> All right, Yuck, you're up. Um, I yell, Galnaz, brace yourself. Oh no! I'm so sorry. Oh no! It's just happening. Uh, and I drop a um, shatter. I turn to face Eok and say, Captain? <laughs> <laughs> so it hits those three plus Kel'Naz. Okay. Uh, I'm so sorry. Constitution saving throw? So DC 14 constitution save. Okay. The guy closest to Theron. Ooh. Well, this is unforgivable. <laughs> the acolyte. Collateral damage. And then the last. Heavier armedly dude. Okay, so the guy that's in melee range with Kelnaz there passes. Does that mean he takes half or all? Yeah, half. Yeah, half. That makes sense. Okay. So he takes seven. The acolyte uh, clutches his, his hands against his head and starts screaming and. Uh, blood starts dripping down his wrists and he just crumbles to the ground. Yeah. Kevin, I'm so sorry. I did 15 damage to you. Well, you also I'm notice that them. their splint metal, their splint armor and their swords seem to get scratches and dents on them as this force uh, clangs against them, crushes and starts crushing them. <laughs> I had to make sure you got taken down, Kevin. Sorry. <laughs> okay. You haven't got down in a while. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Bryn is up then. All right. I fire an arrow at the one battling Kalna. Okay. That's a hit. Good. That's normal for another nine damage. He grunts as your arrow catches him in the side. Holy shit. Extra attack. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> I can't believe you did that. Ooh, nine misses. Do I have some sort of blessing or something? No, Theron does. Oh, you have bless. So yeah, go ahead and roll uh, mm -hmm. 1d4. D6? 
D100. What did you say? D6 D- or D4? No, it's a D4. D4, yeah. D10? Just roll all your dice. Roll them all. Another three. Another three. Only 12. Still miss. Oh. Blast! There. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. All right. There, and you're up then. Okay. Um, Luna will go 20 feet beside me here, and I will use half my movement to climb up on her back. Can't possibly be 30 feet worth of movement to climb up on her back. No, it's it's 15. And then she goes 10 to here with me on her back, and I attack this uh, whatever human my great sword oh, mounted great sword attack that's right with haste and this you have uh, combat inspiration um, 13 wait I get to roll 1d4 make it a, a 15 15 before I tell you you can choose to use your combat inspiration uh I thought sure. it, I would have thought it was an advantage if he's mounted or something. No, I didn't see anything about that. No, you just really? have proficiency or not with mounted combat. Ooh, there we go. Okay, perfect. So you do hit. Go ahead and roll damage. All right, fourteen damage. Fourteen damage is just enough to take him down. As nice. your horse moves so fast. It's just a short distance. The he doesn't have any time to get his defenses up, and your sword slices through him with these. Okay, um, Luna will take a dash action, which allows her to move again with me on her back. It allows her to move double her speed. Uh, yeah. So she has. Most you have a lot of efficient lines. movement. Yeah. yeah, and I slash at this guy who's harrying Kelnaz. I bring down a crushing hits. blow. Um, I'll roll the two. See if I get a five. So three more. Okay, fourteen damage. Your super fast celestial horse darts forward again, and your sword manages to slice again into this bandit. He's unprepared for your arcane speed. Now it is Aha. their turn. The acolyte here is going to. to come up here and with a fiery ruby red hand um, places it on the bandit's shoulder and restores 10, 10 hit points to him. Oh no! Can't be allowing this to happen. And he's going to go 20, 30. And now the bandit here is going to... Hmm, Going to going to step here. So there, and you can use your attack of opportunity if you want. 
Okay, we'll do. Ah, uh, 18's a hit. I'll roll the two. Plus one, so ten. Oh, there goes his healing. All right, you just managed to catch him as he tries to sidestep around and is going to make attacks on Kelnaz. Don't do it. Kelnaz! Ooh, that's a miss. Ooh, that's a miss. Kelnaz! Ooh. Critical! <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> he gone! All right, take 14 slashing damage. As he manages to catch you, catch catch you in the neck, and blood starts burbling. Bless you. So I have minus ten hit points. You fall unconscious to the ground. Yuck! Why? <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry. I think my little wagon disappears too. Oh, you're, yeah. Very poetic. It Poof, it disappears. Uh-oh. Oh, but not Bims. Come back, Bims. Can I control Bims? Oh, God. Can I now be Bims in combat? No. Where did Bims go? I don't know. I think I deleted him. Can you bring him back? Okay. Okay. Uh, so, as... He cuts down Kelnaz. <laughs> he looks around and says, uh, uh, This isn't looking good. <laughs> Kelnaz make a death saving throw. Oh, yeah. All right, one success. All right, Eok, you're up. All right. Um, yeah, watch out, Bren. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> no, I'll, uh, I'll do it without hitting you. Ten feet radius. Fine. So I'll just I'll make it just hit these two dudes and Kelnaz's corpse. Just <gasps> murder locks it. Observe this. <laughs> Actually, I probably do. Okay. <sighs> oh. The accolade falls down screaming, just as the other one did. Half damage. Nine. The bandit grits his teeth in pain, but manages to stay on his feet. I think Kelnaz takes a death a death saving a death uh, I mark. If I take additional damage, yeah, I could I could do it over here instead. It was not really necessary to hit him. <laughs> Too late. Oh god! <laughs> Just doing punishment. <laughs> Ooh, that's a success, though. You don't take a throw, you just take a fail. Oh, it's an instant fail? Yeah. Somebody's poking oh. your corpse. God, Kevin. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, Bryn, you're up. Ooh, you killed him, eh? I never get to do anything because everyone's always killing him. Uh, I take a step back. And lob an arrow. Kill him good. This guy. Arrow him good. 19, 19 hits. For 14 damage. <sighs> Your arrow catches him unaware. And he sways on his feet for a moment. Blinks his eyes. But stays stays up somehow. Oof. Darren? Oh, oh wait. But wait! Yes, I'm sorry. Holy shit. Holy shit! <laughs> Extra attack! <laughs> Let's fly! You literally get an extra... Can you roll the 1d4? Do you need it? 
So is it that a, it was that a one use thing or is that on for a while? It's on for as long as uh, Theron's concentrating on it. Yeah, well, plus I'm at the D4. 16. A 16 misses. Oh, one. I'm going to go ahead and use a luck point to just fire again. <laughs> Feel lucky. All right. Yeah. Give it a little extra jangle. Seven damage. You kill him. Uh. As you realize your arrow is not going to hit the mark, you focus your Take luck. Take the shit out of it. And your arrow flies true. Chow! Those are some nasty humans. Hey, y'all. Theron, please stabilize Kalnaz. <laughs> yeah, let's stabilize Kalnaz and loot yeah, the Yeah, Theron? <laughs> <laughs> Bueller? I dismount off Luna and bless you with ten hit points. Come back to us, Kelnas. Get that ringing out of your ears. Uh, I, am I dead? Well, we have a handful of change in front of his nose. That's sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we went a little overkill on that one. This I feel. <laughs> celestial beast in front of me. I must be. I must be dead. No, this is my magical steed, Luna. You're still here with us, Kelnaz. Your Damn. work here is not done. Damn. <laughs> you have a few more deaths to endure before <laughs> our work is finished. Doesn't get any easier. <laughs> no. No, it won't. Not for you. It's okay. <laughs> Damn it. You're a trooper. <laughs> Why did I choose such a worthless combat class? If I could only travel back in time. Your words of encouragement are always really useful. <laughs> Kelnaz, I pat you on the shoulder. Thank you, Theron. I try to pickpocket him as I'm standing up to my feet. <laughs> Alright, roll a perception check then. Oh my god. Uh, perception. There she is. Oh, damn it. I am shocked. <laughs> and then I just laugh and I say, ah, kill us. <laughs> Classic <Damn>. kill us. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to help you up now. Oh, I stumbled to the ground. <laughs> I get back onto Luna. That's a pretty cool steed. Mm hmm. But it's... Well, it, it appears our ruse was for naught. Didn't really work out. As, as I expected. As That's the true. dust clears from your battle and you guys are recuperating, Bryn, you notice that in the forest to the north, uh, the bandits here have done a poor job of hiding their tracks, and there is a, a well. A very noticeable track uh, that leads deeper into the forest. Perhaps we should quickly check and see, make sure these bandits haven't taken any left them in mm. the woods. Indeed. There's still a slight chance that these are the same bandits that took Hosh. And this is the direction of Seton, so perhaps... You mean Hitch, right? Oh, um, perhaps I meant Hitch. Hatch, I think. Hatch? Possibly hatch or hot. <laughs> One of those words. He may need our aid. So let's, yeah, let's go check this out. Uh, take the lead there, Bryn. Use your tracking skills to the fullest. I life may depend on it. To the fullest of my abilities. Uh. You don't know how much tracking is going on. You enter Seton. Oh, God. Bryn, how did you take us here? 
This the is last our play. game. What has happened? Ah, I've been muted. Oh, ah. I was wondering why. Make a, uh, well, I was like, anytime, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> make a uh, survival check with advantage. Ooh. All right. So this track is fairly obvious and maybe very hastily made with no attempt to conceal it or to minimize the damage to the to the forest around it. Um, all the same as you are following this track, you start getting confused between the track that they came in and other patrols. And it takes you a number of hours before you find a clearing not too far away where you pick up the track again uh, and in the distance you see a large hill where a uh, rough wooden wo wooden uh, fence has been erected around the top of the hill my friends it looks like a small settlement up that hill up yonder hill if you will hmm perhaps bims can Scout it out. See who's waiting for us there. Perhaps he can. To the skies. So you guys are in some trees. Here, I'll make. Well, I'll put us down on well, the map. Well, we wait for Bims to come back, and I do quick a uh, short rest deal. Uh, I'm down because if we do that, I can do song of rest. Do you guys? Okay, here, I'll put this down here. If you guys want to short rest now. Yeah, let's short rest, and then you can add an extra hit dice. I'm really just looking for arcane recovery. Oh, smart. Get all those uh, shatter spells back. That's right. Kelna's shivers. <laughs> oh, cool. Cool looking map. Let's just do a little pretend that you guys did your short rest before you set out into the bandits area and as you guys get to this clearing and you hide among these trees uh, everyone can make a perception check perception perception Let's do a couple hit dice oh Look at that. Look at that. Look at these rolls. This guy's out of control. There seems to be some sort of mystery lake here. Oh, this is where the fence is. Yeah. Okay, you guys can see a distance away. Let's we can use one more hit dice here. Oh! Ooh. I see. You guys can see about a hundred feet away, there is a group, uh, a small group of three bandits who seem to be patrolling the area, and they're approaching. They're going around the hill you know, counterclockwise. They seem to be moving towards you. There's no indication that they see you yet.
But you'll have to make stealth checks if you want to remain hidden. I'll stay hidden. Yeah, definitely gonna try to stay hidden here. Yeah, uh, I'm just gonna do a quick check on something and then... Comes my cell check. All right. So let's see what they roll for their perception. Okay. So these guys are coming towards you. Hold on one second. And you guys can see that they are, one of them is pointing in your direction. It's not clear that they see you, but it is you guys all fear that it's possible. Hmm. We should strike now. Do they look similar to the bandits we just faced? Are they dressed the same? They they do. The one there's one that's wearing splint armor that looks pretty close to what the other guys are wearing. None of it is uniform, but it seems like it's the same uh, rough make. Uh, and the two that are flanking him are wearing brown brown looking leather that you'd guess from this distance is probably leather. Mm. Mm. They get about 20 feet closer and you can hear say, I thought I saw something in there. Let's check it out. Prepare the trap. It worked last time. I will ready my hand crossbow. Are we going to fire first? When they get a bit closer, let's blast them. We could seriously. Oh, ask I could do a hypnotic pattern. They become charmed. Let's wait till they get a bit closer, though. They're still like ninety feet. They get about twenty feet closer. And the one in split mail says something to the guard on his right, who then starts moving in the other direction. Oh. Can't let him get away. I can charge. cast my spell right now. You probably should. Yeah, can I cast? Hmm. You're not going to be able to surprise them. So I'd say if you want to enter into combat, we can roll initiative. Mm, what do you guys think? Let's do it. Yep. Huzzah. Oh, oh my, God. my roll didn't work. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird that you have to click your token always. All right. I didn't clean this up before we did it. Uh, Brandon, 
of you rolled your initiative yet? Nope. Ah, I wasn't selected on a character. And you didn't do your advantage either. Yeah, it did. Oh, it did? For some okay. reason, the initiative roll only puts up one. It's okay. Yeah, you know, it, it does an equation inside the thing. It's like the 1d20, 1d20, kh, 1. But, like, why does it do it that way for an initiative roll, but for an attack roll, it splits it? Yeah, that's a good question. It's like, like why, just a different where's the macro. consistency? Where is the consistency? Write, them, <laughs> write a complaint. A <laughs> letter. All right, Darren, you're up first. All right. I. Now, you guys can yell let Kelnaz go first if you want to. But you have to move yourself in. in the I'm gonna charm the shit out of these guys if you let me go. Oh, okay. You... I guess we could do that. What does that do? Okay. Hypnotic pattern. So 30 foot cube within 120 feet. Now this it... requires Ryan's permission as well. So. Ah. Whoa. Whoa. That's fine. <laughs> it doesn't mean I go last, right? No, it means it I can still arrow them. It just means this is the initiative order from now on. Ah. Uh, yeah. So they're doing a wisdom save. And my spell DC is 15. <laughs> all right. The guy in the swint mail fails. It hits all, it hits all of them. Oh, okay. All three. Good to know. Yep. This is going to the back then. Bah. Okay, so it affects the uh, guy in the splint mail and the guy who started to walk away. Um, but it doesn't affect the bandit that is beside this guy in split mail. So those two are charmed and they have a movement speed of zero. Okay. Sorry. Their eyes Which just glow with pale blue light and so kind of say, dumbfounded. Look. Let's get them, boys. Uh, switch to the one who's not charmed. That one? Okay. I come charging out of the forest. Yeah. Uh, let's see. All right, oh, just over 60. So Luna will take the uh, like dash action. And then I strike down at this guy who's not charmed. Cleave him in twine. How dare you not be charmed? <laughs> How are you moving, moving so fast again, sorry? Uh, on Luna, she did the dash action again. Oh, yes. <laughs> Told you breaking right. the game. How could you let Scott do that? He can basically just teleport at all times, <laughs> full speed. Oops, that was not supposed to be a disadvantage. Twenty-five. The twenty-five hits. Hold on a sec. Rolling one d six. Uh, twenty plus three. So that's a crit, then no. Yeah, it's a twenty yeah. plus like five. Nineteen plus three plus three. Oh, okay. What's, yeah. Oh, because my proficiency is plus three now. Yeah. Yeah, I just rely on Sick. it being green when there's a, a natural twenty. Oh, I thought it might be because I accidentally did it. But I will now roll damage. Uh, roll the two. So an extra plus three, so twelve damage. Not All too right. Savvy. Cries out. He cries out in pain as you, as your sword, as you just come out of, <laughs> come out of the brush blazing. <laughs> <laughs> and with your speed. war horse cracking copper lightning behind it, out of yeah. its glowing copper eyes, and you slice into this guy, giving him a wicked gash. What a wicked gang. Well, hopefully he likes that again. 
Oh, it's happening oh, again. Holy shit. Extra attack. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Okay, a 16 hits. Ooh, got to reroll that one. Ah, it's a one again. So it's 10 damage. Where is your god now? <laughs> I'm riding his horse. He <laughs> cries out in pain. Let's stay on right. his feet. Well, he's he's very sturdy. All right, Bryn, you're up. All right, we are quite a distance away here. Should have brought a celestial horse, Ryan. If only, if only I could have a. Uh, you guys all had yeah. horses. I'm gonna <laughs> just, but just regular I'm gonna walk like a pleb, like. I don't know, 20 feet to the edge of the brush. And what are the charms on this guy? He's got a heart and some sort of moon face, bad moon face. These two are incapacitated. Like, basically, can't move or they're, do anything. They're charmed is what those icons are. And yeah. what uncharms them? Damage? Damage, yep. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well... Or this dude could wake them up, so feel free to Yeah, we should slice him. him. Yeah, is, is the goal here we're just going to slaughter them? Light them up. Yeah, pretty much, man. Light I think I did my up. best. That's what I like to hear. So the one fighting Theron, I'm going to let fly an arrow. Get All right. him with it. 22 hits. And he's humanoid? Yep. That's your first mistake. 13 Being damage. a human. Your arrow catches him in the neck, and he crumbles to the ground. Ah. I will then use my Hunter Conclave ability uh, to fire a second arrow at the adjacent party. Hitting him with a 25. Certainly does hit. And eight damage. And just when you thought it was over, holy shit, extra what attack. Up? This is insane. <laughs> oh, and it's oh, a oh, Nice. 14, 15, 16 damage. As wow. this bandit stands dumbfounded and still you use it as an opportunity to fire two quick arrows into him. And as they thud into him, he chokes with pain as he snaps out of his charmed status and grasps his wounds. Grasp those wounds. All right, Eok, you're up. Arrow. 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 All right. Um... I'm going to cast. Oh, what's the range on that one? Let me just do a quick check. Thought I was going to do. Oh, I don't have It's not on here. Ah, 120. Okay, we'll do that one then. Chaos Bolt. All right, so 19, so that's going to hit. Uh, so target takes 2d8 plus 1d6 damage. Choose one of the d8s to determine the damage type. So I guess I think I can just click here. Uh, that. So five or one. If you roll the same number, the chaotic energy leaps. Ah, I rolled duplicates. All right, so uh, five, I guess, lightning. <laughs> okay. This is lightning damage. Uh, eight lightning damage. This warbling, uh, undulating, uh, pale blue light fires out of Eok's hand. 
And as it approaches, the bandit shifts into lightning and smashes into it and does 19 damage? No, how much are you? Eight. Eight damage. He grunts in pain. Okay, on his turn. Um, he is... Well, as this happens, you can start to hear a, uh, a clamor behind the uh, walls of on the hill. And you can hear voices and people crying out to... Hey, pay attention! What's that noise? And this guy is going to disengage. Go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Where he pulls out a, uh, a red horn and puts it to his lip and makes a loud noise. Uh -oh. oh no. Run. We've come across the bandit kingdom. <laughs> it's the mob. All right. And uh, we're going to need more. The other guy power. is incapacitated. Does it get a chance to shake it off? No. Uh, all it says is the spell ends for an affected creature damage or someone uses an action to shake the creature out of its stupor. Duration up to one minute. So, concentration. Okay, so it doesn't get to do it. So it just nope. sits there. He just stands there, stupefied. Stupefied! I, I know it what song you're referencing, even yeah. though it doesn't sound anything like it. <laughs> <laughs> Scott with the subtle burn. <laughs> okay, so what are you guys going to do? It is up to Kalanaz's turn now. Well... There's trouble coming. Can I have Bims do like a aerial reconnaissance? Water and Bims. Can you uh, do like a flyby? Yep. What height is he gonna fly at? Uh, high enough to stay out of being shot easily, mm. but low enough to actually see something. So put that to a number. Uh, sixty feet. Okay. Just to be clear, that's well within a range of a crossbow. What's the range of a crossbow? The range of a crossbow is, uh, with with disadvantage, it's like four hundred feet. Okay. Whoa. Well, he's gonna go at sixty feet, but fly like in a zigzag pattern. Like an ego. Evasive maneuvers. Okay, so Bims flies up high. And he sees. Oh, cool. All right, just one second while I make things appear. He sees two main groups of bandits who are in the camp and a large tent, a large red tent up on a slightly higher part of the hill and he sees at one end of the camp a strange creature tied to a post. That's here? Mm -hmm. Does he see that they're starting to mobilize? Yes, he sees that they're Everyone is looking for weapons and scrambling. Oh, God. There's so many of them. Uh-oh. Well. Um. Take him, Theron. <laughs> Will do.
So Bims would have gone his around his sixty feet mark to get there. Yeah. Okay. So I assume these cliffs are unscalable. Mm, wouldn't wouldn't assume that. They they look like uh, they're rough, kind of rocky. Can I take a also... shot at this guy? Yeah, if you have something within that has the range of it, sure. Yeah, the hand crossbow. So I'm gonna take a shot. It's disadvantage. Is it more than 120? He's 95. Yeah. The hand crossbow range for for within with with just out without getting a disadvantage is 30. Oh, so, I see. Okay. Yeah. Anything beyond 30, you roll a disadvantage to a maximum of 120. Okay, so I'll roll again and then just bonus. 14. Okay. A 14. And it's against that guy. A 14 hits. Nice. Awesome. I'm going to also, as a, using my bonus action, give. Get her done. Roll your okay. damage. Yeah, roll your damage. Oh, did it not roll? There we go. Six piercing. Ooh, yeah. How do you like that? Okay, Bandit. you hit him. You hit this creature, and he comes back to his normal self. Is it that one? Or that one? I, I shot... It. Yeah, I shot the... Well, it doesn't really matter. I it I does matter, because you wouldn't hit the other guy. with the fourth Okay, team. well, uh, never mind. Uh -huh. Nothing to see here. If I made a mistake, it's okay. We can just say missed. But I meant to shoot the guy in the heavy armor, but we'll just well, say well. It's up to you because that un uncharms this guy if he gets hit. Oh, you're right. Okay, yeah, I would have. I tried to shoot the big guys. Sorry, Kevin, I, I didn't hear properly. No worries. Okay, so the 14 would have missed. Okay, so now it is Theron's turn. Um, okay, I'll ride up to this guy and strike at him with my greatsword, as one does. Ooh. Now hold on, just so I know. The damage guy or the charm guy? The damage guy. All right, go ahead. Ooh, I feel a cleaving Roll. and twin coming twin. 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 Oh, minus one, so five, six, seven, seventeen. How many, sorry? Seventeen. 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 17. All right, your great sword manages to find a spot within his split armor and goes in deep, giving him a terrible. Not only did it find a spot, it made a spot. In his armor. <laughs> <laughs> and your sword comes out wet with blood, but he's still managing to uh, stand his ground. Well, I'm going to use my bonus action because I did a critical. To swing again. Don't you already get that second attack? I will also get that second attack. Oh, but this one was only 11. 11 is no good. He okay. bats it away. Well, now he will face the wrath of my actual attack. <laughs> there minutes. we go. Uh, yep, 13 damage is good. 13 damage is enough to bring him to the ground. Is he manages one last parry before you manage to bring your sword in and finish him? 
Nice. Now, this guy who's standing here dumbfounded, uh, can we communicate with him, or is he just completely like catatonic, basically? Um, you can communicate with him. He just is incapacitated, so he, he can't, yeah, can't he take can't actions or reactions. Action. Yeah. Okay. I intimidate him. I say, how many of you are here? What are you doing in this area? He doesn't make any reaction to you. He just stares uh. blankly. His eyes still alight with pale blue light. All right, well, I've taken my actions here. All right, Bryn, you're up. So should I just arrow him? Is that is that what's going down? Make it to this point. Oh, as long as you get... Well, there's no real reason to. Um, I guess you should just wait until we all have a turn again, and then we, like, make sure we murder him in one round. That, to get in position, I'd say, is what Didn't you should do. Did the guy already blow the horn, though? Yeah, but this guy's still incapacitated, so we might as well like just get everyone... Return. Just get in position and then like get ready to like for sure murder him in the next round. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Bob's going to see right through this plan as you describe it in detail. Luckily for you, <laughs> well, I wasn't listening. Oh, good. Um, I'm going to use a dash to run over to this bush over here. Okay. Okay. And that's literally all. No turns this time. All right, Yip, you're up. Okay, I am going to, I will go right up there, Dash, dashing as well. All right. Next, it is the bandit's turn. Okay. Okay, these two come scampering up the larger of the two hills uh, that kind of peaks over, giving them a vantage point over the wooden fence, and they have two heavy crossbows that they are aiming down into. I guess they're going to attack Darren, who's the most obvious, not doing some damage. Take that, Darren. Okay, the one in leather is going to do its first attack. Okay, that's a miss. And the one in split mail takes aim. Ah, misses as well. Okay. Kelnaz, you notice as a about a hundred or so feet away, another patrol is running. Oh god, that's here to the south. Yeah, uh, runs sixty feet up towards in your direction. Guys, 
we need to just GTFO, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're setting up to get a full turn of strikes or get attacked ourselves by a whole team of people. It is now Kelnaz's turn. Maybe. Oh, oh before I say that, okay. sorry. I just have to do this. One, two, three. Crossbows fly into the air at Vims. Can I make him return to me? Nope. This is not on your turn. This Ooh. is on their turn. His AC is 13. Oh boy. Okay, one hit. So he takes six piercing damage. He has one hit point left. Okay. As one of the bolts takes him and cuts a deep gouge in his uh, neck. Or along its body. Now it is your turn, Kalnaz. Can I now make Bims reappear? Uh, yes, but does that cost an action? It might be an action or a bonus action. Uh, okay, I'll read about that. Um, I'm gonna shout out to the group. There's more coming. I think we should probably. Try to get out of here. I'm going to run 30 feet. Use my movement. And it is an action. I just did that. And I will use an action to return Bims. Oh, and then using a bonus action, I will give Bryn combat inspiration. You can do it, but let's run away. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of my turn. All right, Theron, you're up. Hmm, well, I don't know about this running away. But, um, seems like we should gallantly battle these deviants. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's try to murder this guy this turn. Go for the guaranteed murder. Hold on, oops. We could always return at night and try to like kill a couple more at a time. Slowly kill them out. Yeah, whittle them down. Whittle them down. The old ah. hit and run. Whittle them down right now. Just fire some arrows at those dudes. You gotta watch out for the ads. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Shoot any the like, ads. <laughs> any prolonged combat, I die. Yeah, we we pulled too many. Yeah, we pulled way too many. We gotta reset the. Uh, these guys are paralyzed. What are these guys? The one guy is incapacitated. Incapacitated, eh? Oh, that doesn't do a whole lot. Oh well. I will attack him. Oh god, I whiff. Cleave him up. <laughs> well, I can. Fortunately, try again, as we all know now. Ugh. Oh my god. I whiffed. All right, well, the good news is he's not awake. So <laughs> you guys can now decide what to do. We're in exactly the same position we were before, except there's two more guys shooting at me. So I'm probably going to... Take up defensive positions. This will be a 60. Yeah, you over there somewhere. Even the charmed guy that we position around? Yeah, I oh. guess so. He's, he's your there job now. Celestial steed. Off into the wilderness. Leaving <laughs> here in the bushes. <laughs> oh. 
All right, Bryn, you're up. All right. Can I see these guys up here? Or are they too high up for me to see? Uh, you can see them, but they have cover against you. Three quarters cover. Ooh. So what, what was the running plan here? Scott just left? No, I'm just yep. repositioning to fight these other guys that are... Look, I can't get up there, I figure. So I gotta fight these other guys. Just... Are you going down. all the way around when you could play at the entrance? Like the way we were halfway around? No, no, there's guys coming up here, Ryan. Oh, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah like we're going to get a ways away. I feel like we could like, get up and in before... Like climb up the hill? Climb up or run around to the other side where the entrance is? The entrance is down there. Darren is taking his turn. Bren, you can take yours. I'm just making him question his life choices. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'll do that while you're taking your turn. I'll continue to doubt myself. Ah, oh, why did I do this? <laughs> Should have held my horses. <laughs> <laughs> um, am I provided any cover by, like, ponying up against the side of this... Uh, rock, or are well, they you're in, you're rain in rain boulders on me? You're in a bush, aren't you? What about cover I save? Am in a bush, but they're three quarters covered, so I feel from, like from where they are right now, right yes, now. it would like it would conceal you, and they wouldn't be able to see you. But it's a slant, and so if they came to the edge and looked down, they would not have any problem hitting you. Rain arrows into your head. Hmm. Yikes. And you're not hitting How long in this. Did I in turn this for? A minute, I think. Yeah, a minute. Maybe. Which is like until it is not a huge amount of time. Like eight more That's rounds. A bunch of turns. Okay, well, I'm just going to have to do the classic hail of arrows here. So I'll fire an arrow at this guy. What does three quarters cover do? Gives him a plus five to his AC. Oh, shit. Plus five? What does that make it? Makes it a mystery. God damn. Well, he, we know he had, like, splints or something like that from the last time. He's, he's got pretty good armor. The, guy, got the guys 16. with the beard here are wearing leather armor. Oh, that's a little less. Yeah, the guy next to him Still, he's is gonna wearing have... a splint. Probably over 16 or 17. It's going to be tough to hit him. That is true. Hmm. Well, you could you could ready an action for them to come to the ledge and shoot down at you, and then at least then... Mm, that's true, because I'm hidden in the bushes. Yeah. You're not currently hidden. Oh. No. Hiding is an action. You just ran to a bush and, like... You're, you didn't take a moment to actually hide against them, so they can see. Oh. They know you're there. And last turn, I wasted it, thinking I was hiding in the... Well, you also attacked, didn't you? Some no, I ran to this no. bush only. At full speed, because Scott well, wanted dashed. to stop me. I did dash. That's yes. your action. That's yeah. why I was thinking you took an action. Alright. Well... Just to fake them out, I will dash this way oh <laughs> into this bush. Do you have the, have the movement to actually get there? Yeah. That was right here. So I can go 35. But you can't go diagonal exactly like that. You have to go on the grid. Okay. So you do like 40 and then... 35 to here? Yeah, yeah. No, just count it out. These things are saying feet, not squares. There's so one, 15, two, three, four, five, four, six, five, seven, seven, eight. Uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 feet. To here. Sorry, each square? It's so five. Okay, well, last time you said these rulers did fine. No, I said the... 
I said by the grid. Oh, okay. the rulers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gets me to here. That was 40 by my count, so that would be 40 feet. Okay. Okay, so I'll just go one before. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Does that make sense? Uh, I think so. So that's with the dash, right? That's with a dash, all those green boxes. So isn't this There's one diagonal in there, not two? What's your what is your speed what's your speed total? Thirty five. Oh, okay. Alright. So yes. Well that solves that. Alright. Okay, go ahead. That's all. Oh yes, fair enough. Just an argument to move. Well, it wouldn't be an argument if you obey the rules. Well, sometimes this thing works, sometimes it doesn't. That's true. It does sometimes work and sometimes it doesn't. It depends if the grid is part of the image or not. If it's part of the image, it doesn't work. Uh, all right, now it's Eox turn. I run away. Yeah, let's get out of here. <laughs> uh... I'm going to cast a spell. I know. Ooh, can I guess? You could guess. Is it shattered on me? <laughs> <laughs> close. Very close. I'm going to cast Haste on Theron. Ooh. Aha. Maximum velocity. I hate Excellent. to do this, but have you checked the the range? Uh, it's thirty feet. You do it by do grid. It. You do hate to do that, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then I'll move. You know, over here and then do it. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Pale blue light encapsulates there and again, giving him. Supernatural speed and energy. I say, Theron, you better act like a tank with all that tank power. <laughs> <laughs> okay, their turn. Um, okay. They surrender. These guys disappear back into the camp. These guys are going to do one, two, three, four, five, thirty, one, two, three, four, five, thirty. All right. All three of them are going to try and take shots at Theron with their crossbows. And this. Remember, you have plus two AC, Theron. One hit. Oh, assuming still that, enough to hit me. And then yep. 19. How does that fare? That doesn't hit me now, thanks oh, yeah, to he's like invulnerable. Kevin. All right, so just one hit. You take five piercing damage as one of the bolts manages to hit you. And there's commotion inside the camp. But 
right now you guys can't see inside of there. Okay, now it's back up to Kelnaz's turn. Is the strategy that we're actually going to stay? Well, spell slots have been spent. <laughs> okay. so, the die has been cast. The die has been cast. Uh, okay. Well, I will... Uh, one, two, three... I will reposition slightly in this tree, and I'll take a shot at disadvantage, I guess. I don't really have many good like long-range spells. Actually, let me check this one real quick. Whoops. 60 feet. Oh, it's only 60 feet. Fucking hell. Okay, I'll shoot with my uh, hand. And I'll shoot at... Oh, yeah, there's there's some ads. This guy right here. Ads over here. Sorry. Boop, boop. Hey, there we go. Well, 19 hits. Which one are you Roll firing damage. again, please? Uh, this one here on the left. Okay. Eight piercing. There we go. Take that. As this one is trying to fire its bolt at Theron, he doesn't see your yeah. crossbow bolt fly long through the air and still hits true to him, hits him in the leg. What is it? I'm like arcing them. I'm using the gravity of it. Theron, you're up. Okay, uh, which is the one that got hit? The guy here uh, on, on the, the left, that left, left, yeah. Okay. I will ride down there. And using a dash action if necessary. And then strike at this guy who is injured. Okay, go ahead. Oof. That's a hit. That old doer. I'll reroll that damage. Six. Oh no! <laughs> my five, uh, five total damage there. Do you still have my uh, inspiration? Uh. Combat inspiration. You gave it combat to inspiration. Sorry. Wait, from from this combat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do then. But that's I okay. Gave I'm gonna it to you on the second turn or something. I will use it to try and fix my next attack. So here comes extra attack. That still seems okay. Let's hope mm -hmm. I actually roll damage this time. The one in there. Six. Oh my god. Alright, it's ten though. It's doing something. In a flurry of blows, you cut deep scratches into this bandit. And he looks bewildered. But keeps his ground. Okay. Well, I got a haste attack left. The question should it be a super attack? You've done mm. three attacks so far, right? No, 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 no. Two. Yeah, so I have this hand crossbow. All right, I'll make it a super attack. This will be minus five, but I do have a special die to help me, so I will use my special die. Well, roll first for you. Uh, oh, it was 12. 12 is what you rolled? Yeah. 1d8 is it? It is 1d8. Oh, there it is. Is it a 1d8, Kevin? 
Uh, yeah, it should be a 1d8. Because Inspiration is just a 1d6. It's like the upgraded version of it. Alright, we'll add 7 to that. It doesn't say in your little box. Oh, weird. Okay. Here, I'll check it out. It's D8 starting this level. So, okay, 7, you hit. Go ahead and do damage. Roll in the damage. Okay, let's let's you roll a good him. damage. He dies. He's super attack. murdered. Okay. Murderous. Then I will great weapon bonus action attack. <laughs> and oh, cleave into this guy. You already Twine used a bonus on. action, haven't you? With your haste. Oh, maybe so. Is that bit haste? Use a bonus action. Let's see. No, haste is another action. It's another full action added to. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. All right, Sweet. fair enough. This will be a regular Hopefully, attack. Get extra attack. Uh, probably not enough. Eleven hits. Oh, okay. What a great sword! I'll roll the two. Oh wait, wait, wait! Sorry, this is on the on the uh, more more um, heavily armored guy, so it doesn't hit. Sorry. Oh, okay, that's what I figured. Sorry. Should flood the chat box with multiple things. Oh man, that would have been a juicy. Yeah, Bob, uh, you're right. It's a uh, D8. Yeah, justice level. It you know, went up to D8. Um, Bryn, you're up. All right. Well, now that Theron has engaged our enemies, I'll step into the open and let Bunch fly of an arrow of justice. Let it fly. Against the heavily armored guy or the leather guy? Thank you. Um, I will... Go against the one that's not engaged in that. So that guy? Yeah, regular... Regular guy? Mm. That looks very Did you roll? Uh yeah, I, he's has he taken a turn? Yes, they have taken turns. Uh so I only rolled a nine. Yeah, nine is not good. Alright, well yes. Luckily it's holy shit extra attack time. Holy shit extra attack time. Oh my god. <laughs> Your arrow splits the arrow that you had previously fired. <laughs> In midair. <laughs> oh my god. Meaningless. How is such a thing even possible? Well, that's a shame. <laughs> All right, it's EX turn. Okay. I move over here. And I cast Haste on Bryn. Now you know that's going to end it for Theron. Really? It's concentration. Yeah, it's concentration. Ooh. I can double concentrate. All right, that sucks. Never mind. I can I can hold two things. <laughs> All right. In that case, lots of range over there. Just make sure uh, you count the squares. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, ten. Well, it's the exact same. These measuring things work perfectly. Well, no, maybe yeah. not on diagonals, but yeah. be sure. No, I was I was totally wrong. It's different. <laughs> Two, six. Yeah, it's totally different. Ten, twelve, twelve. Uh, twelve. So yeah, it's still fine. I will cast. 
Scorching Ray. And I will try and hit this dude next to Theron. 17? 17 hits. For six. Got another one coming. Kill him up. Is he still there? He's the main heavy guy? Yep, he's doing quite fine. 16? 16, he dodges your fiery ray. All right, and I'm going to send the third one at this guy. Go ahead. 20. 20 hits. Four. Four on 2d6. Come on, man. It's not a very good roll. Yeah. Embarrassing. All right. On their turn. They lay down. They lay down. They go, why bother? <laughs> okay. Not close enough. When Bims was up here, could we identify what this is? Is this like a leader or a prisoner? It's a prisoner, but we don't know. There is a strange creature tied to a post. Yeah. So one of these bandits is going to fire its crossbow bolt at Theron. That's a hit. So you take five piercing damage. Okay. This one is going to rush up to, to Bryn, and he's going to fire his crossbow bolt at him as well. Bryn, what's your AC? Not nine? 25? Yeah, it's not 25 either. <laughs> okay, and um, the not that great. 16, guy, 15. This guy in Swift Armor is going to draw his longsword on Theron, and Slashes in the air. One hit. So he takes seven slashing damage. And he brings the sword around for a second attack. And just manages to clash his sword against yours as you parry it. And now... Uh-oh. There's... This feels like an impossible amount of guys. Alright, you... No one's quite in a good position to see that. Uh, lastly... Okay, now it's up to Kelnaz's turn. Okay, so I'm going to use my movement to move here, and I'm going to cast Vicious Mockery on dude right here. So Wisdom Save DC 15. If he fails, he'll take 4 Psychic Damage and have Disadvantage on his next attack. <laughs> ah! <laughs> All right. 4 Psychic Damage. He takes four psychic damage as he winces and winces in psychic pain at your at your vicious mockery. And I have two more bardic inspirations, so I'm gonna Theron, you didn't use yours yet, did you? Yeah he did. Uh I did, yeah. Okay, I'll give you one again. Combat inspiration, one D eight. Okay. That's the end of my turn? You're up there, Me again? Okay. I'll attack this guy. Um, so... Well, you, uh, you might I'll try again. So you can use the thing you uh, extra attack. Okay. That's a hit. 
I'll roll that one. Oh, jeez, I'm really not wow. getting the re-rolls on here, but it does 10 damage, whatever. Something. Technically, it is something, yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, then haste attack, or extra attack, depending on how you want to... 18 hits. Ooh, perfect damage. Perfect damage. Oh, man, nice. All right, your greatsword leaves wounds wherever it slashes. You up, Bryn? Uh, wait a sec. Oh, Before... Go oh, there, this is a dude right here, too. Yeah. Um, I My Luna will take a disengage action and maneuver here between this guy and Bryn. And just, uh, that's it. You and this horse, eh? Yeah. I'm learning its ways. Not not just a horse, Borbs, a celestial <laughs> horse. Yeah. <laughs> of teleportation and jamming you up no matter what. Look, any horse can run fast. That's pretty much what they do. Uh, Mine just has copper glowing eyes and is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. There's a reason cavalry are so much better than not cavalry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bryn, you're up. All right, well, I will take a step backward and lob an arrow into the front runner here. Why don't you go back a little farther so that he has to give me an attack of opportunity oh, yes. if he gets by you. There you go. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> Just invoke attacks of opportunity. Way to, way to jump on the ads there, Scott. <laughs> God. What a good tank does. Uh, yeah, I'm going to lob an arrow out for a change. 18. 18 hits. For 7 piercing damage. The bandit grunts as the arrow hits him in the shoulder, but he shakes off the pain after a second. All right. I will use my second attack to fire another arrow. 19. Arrow. All right. Woo. 14 damage. That's way better. That's a huge swing in damage there. Yeah. Well, I rolled a 1 with the first one, and then 8 with the second. That's the exact swing you can get. The This arrow takes him just below the rib cage, and he draws in a deep breath of air, and his knees shake for a second, but stays sturdy. Aha! That's it. All right, Eok. Okay, I'm gonna fire off a firebolt. I missed. Next. Certainly did. <laughs> Unfortunate. <laughs> All right. My turn. Nope. Oh. This bandit is going to take a shot at Theron. Ooh. Ooh. I need take, luck. Give me some luck. Take 12 piercing damage. Ooh. Oh, man. We need to get that hell out of here. There's so many more of these guys coming. Yeah, there's we like... We faced like five, and there's like 15 more. There's another... There's janky uh, way. Another bolt coming your way. This one at disadvantage. Well, it's going to miss. Oof. I'm not going to reroll. It's going to... So that one just flies wild. Well, we certainly haven't had enough. How are those guys teleporting off? They, well, first of all, you can't see them. They're on the other side of the hill. <laughs> but there's... But they're sliding down the hill. <laughs> Ooh. 
We Did need it, some serious slumber uh, mancy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had that much slumber mancer power. Okay. All right, it is Kalnaz's turn. All right, I think we should tactically. Re I will take a shot with my hand crossbow, not at first time ever, and encourage everyone else to start moving away. That's it. Man, I'm fucking getting some hits with these things. Theron Bryn. Oh, you need to roll this advantage. Why? He's 35 feet away. Oh, for fuck's sake. Just take a step forward if you... There okay. you go. What? Okay. And now I will take Six four kills steps him. backwards. Yeah! Let's get out of here. Jared, you up? Um... I guess we could flee like cowards. <laughs> I mean, you can stay and fight, but I have no healing. I'm like oh, a non-healing. How high can, uh, can we jump? Um, <laughs> not exceedingly high. Depends how high do you want to jump. How high is this wall and cliff? You're not going to be able to jump over that. I'll, I'll look up the rules if you want, but it's... What if my jump value was tripled? Then Ooh. that might be a case. What kind of witchcraft is this? It's like a Fosbury right. flop. Fosbury flop. <laughs> <laughs> this, this person over here looks important. Uh, equal... So does this a number of feet equal to three plus your strength modifier. Three plus strength modifier? Oh. So that's only four. So... Uh, so 12 feet is as high as I can jump? Yeah. If, one, if one. you have that crazy ability, then yeah. Pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> you can't jump 12 feet in real life. Well, no, but I'd be casting a spell to jump high. Yeah. How about jump distance? Jump distance? Uh, How long about jump? You cover a number of feet up to strength score if you move at least 10 feet on foot immediately before the jump. Of your strength it. score, not the modifier, right? Yeah. A number of feet equal to up to your strength score. If you mm. make a standing long jump, you can leave only half the distance. Interesting. Carry on. I believe it's Theron's turn. What's my turn? Okay. I'm going to go 20 down to this guy. Charging down at him. Making my attack. Oof. That's a hit. That's decent, 12. He's looking well bloody now. Okay. Next attack. That's a hit. He's Another 12. looking extremely bloody now. Barely He's struggling to live. Haste attack. Uh, I'll do the dealie. My god, you're just a killing machine. You missed. Mm. Damn. All right. Oh, use a bardic. Oh, you did. I did, yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. To horse will disengage action, and I have 40 <laughs> left to use. So, the old horse 5, disengage 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So, besides Bryn here, <laughs> like a laser, just run in and out. Borbs, do, do you see what Scott's doing here? He's charging in on a horse, attacking three times, 
and getting away unscathed. That's what a horse does. You're just oh, like charging in. Amazing. He's also, he's also hasted. Why, why are we going to run? Why doesn't he just do this to every single guy on the map? Well, if I, I think eventually the us. Yeah, the arrows will chip us down eventually. I'm eventually. taking mega damage here. Not while Scott's on his celestial horse. <laughs> he can still get hit by arrows. Pretty sad over here. In fact, I could use a back rub if anyone can spare one. No, no one heals. Yeah, you're the back rubber. <laughs> That's true, I can heal. I think Ryan can heal a little bit too. I can, yeah, I got some heals. Well, Brain, it's your turn. Um, I will actually do a Cure Wounds on Theron. And I'm going to do it as a level 2. Alright, so I believe that's 2d8 plus your spellcasting modifier. Yeah. I'm going to see if the macro for this thing works. Level two. Oh, that cannot be. Okay, that's both of them. It was like three, give me a freaking break. On 2d8 plus two, not possible. One so you have to roll an extra d8? No, it's there. Oh, I see, I see. There. Yeah, it did both. Okay, yeah, so Bryn's hands glow with golden golden light and Theron receives a bit of health a vitality how much? 9 just 9 there's a bit of a whip oh, it's, keeps me above uh, insta gib 4 and a 1 oh no 1 was a 6 the other was a 1 ok Eok you're up all right. Uh, I see those dudes coming from over on the side over here. This guy's super sad, though. You could probably ice him. Yeah, I will. Uh... Yeah, I'll toss a firebolt down at him. Nope. Nope. Now, now I'm going to run away. <laughs> <laughs> so I start making my way back through the forest to try and make ground on these guys. How many feet do you go? Uh, basically, I am where I should be. All right. But my intention is to start making back through the forest. I say, let's get out of here. This guy bolts. <laughs> All right. So that guy bolts as a group of bandits meet him. You see one of them, one of their hands glows in red ruby light. Oh. And one of the bandits starts feeling a little bit better. Damn it. Darren and Bryn, you guys are within 100 feet of these guys, so they're... Oh, they dashed. I'm sorry. They can't do that. Okay. These guys will... This guy shakes this one so that he's no longer enchanted. Alright, so this one is going to fire a 
heavy crossbow bolt at Bryn. Does that hit? 15. I have 15. So I would assume yes. That's a yes. So you take 6 piercing damage. Oh. Ouch. I fall unconscious. Actually? No. That's the first damage I've taken. Good lord. Fifty. Okay. All right. Kelnaz and Yoki. Everyone can see is this woman who is part of this group over here. Draws back a bow. Takes aim. And seems to be firing at Yuk. And this arrow with uh, like a red, uh, a red kind of smoky like effect swings to the air, but the arrow doesn't come close to hitting you. Well, that was scary. And uh, now it is Kelnaz's turn. I am running away. Uh, yeah, I'm out of here. Let's get out of here, boys. <laughs> the dash action. I guess yeah. technically... Well, yeah, I'm going to dash away. Commit to your... <laughs> Theron, Bryn, let's get out of here. <laughs> There's too many. Bryn could probably jump on the horse. It's still probably faster. <laughs> it's hasted. Yeah, I'm going to grab Theron's hand and ride off in sunset on this celestial horse of justice. Uh, it was Theron's turn still? Ooh. Assuming Kelna is spending his action to dash? Yeah, I'm dashing. Well, can I use my action to, like, grab Bryn's hand and help him onto the Um... I mean, you can help him onto the horse, but you he has to, you have to wait till his turn for him to get on the horse. Oh, well, that's a shame. I'm sure you're fast on your feet, Bryn, <laughs> as we all know. Can they not like coordinate between yeah, the two turns? Like, they could just yeah. They, I was just thinking that you could just you could just wait, and then we let let Brim go in front of you for the rest of the. Fight. Oh, okay. Brim, come on. Is we it an to... action or a bonus action to get on? It's just part of your movement. It takes half your oh, okay movement or something like that. I get on the horse. Facing backwards. All right, and, and I she fire runs. an arrow at this guy <laughs> to cover our tracks. Okay, go ahead, do that. Which One. guy are you firing at? Uh, this guy in the heavy armor. Okay, twenty hits for five, six, seven damage. Now, I would say that this creature is within five feet. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use my Hunter Conclave ability to throw down another one with a 15. And that would hit. And that one does 12. That arrow 
takes this acolyte down. Oh! He's wearing no armor, and his arrow just slices through his cloth, his clothes. I will use my holy ship, second attack, um, and I'll fire an arrow at this way down at the bottom. Which guy? Uh, this guy in the middle. Okay. Twenty-five. Well, twenty-five hits. For thirteen piercing damage. You take him out as well. Ooh. Thud, thud. And the guy that's within five feet in the heavy will also get a shot. Ooh, and it's critical. <laughs> For 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 damage. Ooh, just enough. For oh! Time. Why are we running? We can simply run around a <laughs> celestial horse, arrowing and great sorting the remaining guys. Oh my god. All right, Theron, it's your That's turn. All the things, yeah. Okay, Luna's gonna carry us into the bush. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, fifty, fifty-five, sixty. Sort of like basically where they are, and then we dash action out of this zone. Perfectly safe, because there's a loading zone. <laughs> so you have well, 60 feet moving. remaining so you can go 30 feet ahead through the thick bush and a horse okay. so you leave Yuck and Kalnaz and Brent, uh, 30 feet behind you run quickly catch up with the celestial horse well your I... horses are probably just Tied up somewhere back here, yeah, right? I Let's... dash out and try and get to our horses and get on our horses and get out of here. This bizounds. We've weakened them. We can we'll return come back. to. We can return to hagger them further. <laughs> yes. We should, I'm <laughs> actually kind of excited. Hagger. I'm kind of excited to like besiege this fortress. <laughs> Just like slowly whittle them down. Yes. Maybe they'll maybe they'll come to terms and negotiate with us. <clears throat> well, I don't think I have any way to stop you guys. Let's see. Oh, we'll be back. It's very late. <laughs> Ryan needs to go to bed. Yeah, I should probably <laughs> go to bed as well. In fact, he's leaving. <laughs> I want to make sure it was in your head for your whole sleep. Uh, not very nice. Okay, well, you see that they do seem to give some amount of chase, but once you guys get into the thick of the drowned wood, uh, they they eventually don't go too much further in. And if you guys are going to run, then you manage to get away safely. Running like cowards. <laughs> Running like strategic... In, in their defense, though, we just, like, popped out of the bushes, murdered five to ten guys, and then disappeared into the bush. <laughs> on a celestial horse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got seven of them. We'll come back. We'll get more. <clears throat> Do they respawn while we're not there? 
As soon as you zone, they respawn? No, I think this says... <laughs> we'll just farm them. <laughs> we'll just farm them. All future... <laughs>